There are two main issues I have with combat in D&D. One is that it's often not very dynamic or tactical. I made a whole video already on what I do to help fix that, link in the description. The second is that it can often drag on for way too long. People say D&D is 30 minutes of fun stretched out for 4 hours, and yeah, that does tend to be the case. Long sluggish fights are usually the main culprit. So that's what this video is about. Without further ado, here's some things I do in my games that have really helped to speed up combat. The first solution is probably going to be controversial, but I also think that it's my best advice for this topic. I've been doing this for a while, and it works really well. Instead of rolling initiative and painstakingly tracking every single creature involved in the fight, just start with whichever player rolled the highest, have them take their turn, and go clockwise from there. If a player has more than one creature to control, including the dungeon master, they all take their turns one after the other, in whichever order that player chooses. Obviously this isn't some brilliant new invention, it's basically how every board game ever invented works. But it's not how D&D has traditionally done it, and a lot of D&D players tend to be resistant to change. It makes sense, D&D already has a lot of rules, so learning new ones isn't ideal. If something isn't obviously broken, most people would rather just leave it. And others take a strange sense of pride in how complex their game is, as though complex rules for the sake of complexity in a game is some kind of badge of honor to mark your intelligence. I'm just here to convince you to show you how much these attitudes can hold your game back. A game mechanic doesn't have to be broken to be improved, nor does it have to be complex to be fun. So what benefits does this simplified initiative present for your table? First, it shaves off a good minute from the beginning of the fight that would normally be spent asking players their scores, organizing them, writing it all down in a list. If you got the little initiative tracking things to put on the DM screen, you gotta do that too. And usually players don't even use them because only the two closest to you can even read them. Then after every single person takes their turn, you, the DM, have to consult your list and let the next person know it's their turn. Then they scramble to look at the board and figure out what to do because they weren't paying attention because they didn't know it was about to be their turn. With this new way of doing things, or old way more accurately, you skip that long awkward pause at the beginning of combat. Nobody's turn ever gets skipped on accident and players are more prepared because they can literally see their turn coming. There's also less time between turns because the DM doesn't have to be the one in charge of keeping track of turn order for the whole table. The DM already has far and away the biggest mental workload of anyone at the table. Maybe there's another term for this, but mental workload is just what I call all the little things that you have to remember or keep track of in D&D. In combat, the DM usually has multiple monsters, tracking their HP, abilities, remembering their actions, reactions, resistances, passive effects. As a DM, you're the arbitrator of rules, so you're expected to know them well. And then you also have the monster's motivations and all that to keep in mind, because rolling initiative doesn't mean roleplaying stops. I'll talk a little more about that later, though. But the point here is, anywhere that you can reduce the mental workload, especially for the DM, you should, because it will make your games less stressful and more fun for you, the DM, and that in turn makes the game faster and more fun for everyone else. The DM is the bottleneck for everything that happens in D&D. Whenever there's a slowdown in the game, whenever any player is waiting to do something, gets bored, and pulls out their phone, it's almost always because the DM has to resolve something else before they can get to whatever that player wants to do. This isn't an attack on anyone. The DM is a human being, not a computer. I'm just stating the facts of the game. Freeing up the DM's mental workload will make literally everything in the game happen smoother and faster. Anywhere that you can remove complexity on the DM's side without much drawback, you should. You'll notice I didn't say no drawback. There are some things players might not like about the simplified initiative. One is that characters with higher initiative scores won't go as early in the turn order quite as consistently. This is mainly a problem for PCs that are heavily invested in going first. For example, Twilight Stalker Rangers, War Magic Wizards, and anyone who took the alert feat. The Assassin Rogue in particular has a feature that's dependent on going before enemies in the turn order. Please let me go! Please let me go first! I'm doing something! If your players already made an initiative-focused character and have concerns about this, you could just try arranging the seating so that they sit next to the DM's right, making sure they always go before the monsters. It's a little metagamey, but I don't think that that's always a terrible thing. 
Combats have been noticeably smoother and faster since I implemented this rule, with almost no drawbacks. Try it out at your table and let me know how it goes. I bet you'll like it as much as I do. Another thing that'll speed your combat up is to end the fight when the fight is over. Once a combat has been decided, all the tension is already gone, so playing it out is a waste of time. This is part of that role-playing in combat that I mentioned before. Monsters have motivations in combat, and one of those motivations is almost always to survive. Once your monsters realize that they aren't going to achieve their other goals, they should revert to surviving and flee. This has the double benefit of speeding up combat and making your NPCs feel like intelligent, living creatures. In my games, monsters usually run when the group as a whole is about half health, or their goal becomes otherwise unobtainable. For example, an item they were trying to steal gets teleported away, or their leader is killed. This will make your fights easier though, so you'll want to do something to compensate. When it makes sense, I often increase monsters' health, sometimes up to double their original value. And it does make sense for almost every monster size large and up. If increasing monster HP doesn't seem appropriate, another option is to add more enemies. Don't ever double the number of enemies though. I've learned the hard way that that's a great way to get a TPK. I'm talking like one or two more enemies. Overall, since I adjust total enemy HP for balance, this doesn't always save me a massive amount of time. The benefit here is largely in preserving verisimilitude and making fights more engaging. But it will save a bit of time here and there, and it's always good to keep in mind that if a battle feels like it's dragging and people are getting bored, most of the time that means the monsters have already lost and have no reason to stick around. You should also be careful of how many participants you have in a combat. Throwing more than 5 or 6 monsters at your players can really slow the game down, so I don't usually go above that. I also won't run games for more than 6 players, that's my limit as a DM. Finally, I don't allow characters to cast spells that summon more than one or two creatures, for example, animate dead or conjure animals. They can still cast the spells, they just can't exceed the one or two summon limit. If you really want the epic feel of a big battle with lots of enemies and or allies, minions and swarms can help with that. Minions are super simple, they're just regular monsters that have one HP. Some people do more with them, but that's the essence of a minion. It's just a monster that dies as soon as it takes damage, so you don't have to track hit points. Minions are a great way to have a lot of enemies on a battle, without having as much to keep track of, but for me at least, they can threaten my suspension of disbelief. The idea of an ogre minion with less hit points than a kobold just feels wrong. I find it hard to keep thinking of my D&D world as a real place when I notice egregious inconsistencies like that. Because of this, I tend to avoid using minions except for small and weak enemies. Specifically, medium or smaller and less than CR1. In general though, I prefer to use swarms, which is basically just a collection of creatures. To make a swarm, first I find a creature from the monster manual to make a swarm out of. I quadruple their HP, make them a size or two larger, give them an extra attack, and give them bonus damage if they have more than half health to signify their strength in numbers. Finally, I also make swarms take double damage against AoE stuff like Fireball to simulate the damage affecting each member of the swarm individually. The last thing that can slow down a fight is the players. This happens at almost every table I've ever been at, and it's not your fault as a DM, but that also means there isn't a huge amount you can do about it. If you're a player, please don't do this. If you're doing it, stop it. Get some help. Figure out what you're going to do before your turn comes. If you're a DM, just try to remind players of that. The clockwise initiative makes this a lot easier for reasons I've already explained, but sometimes the players might need reminders. And sometimes they need timers. This is a last resort option, but if you've got a player who is never prepared for their turn, no matter how many times you've addressed it, I've, I've set a timer down or an hourglass, and uh, I've threatened to skip their turn if they don't figure it out. Nicely, though. That's important. Don't be a dick while you do it, and it should be fine. As long as they're also not a dick. In which case, I might suggest not playing with them. That's another lesson I learned the hard way. No D&D is better than bad D&D. Don't play with assholes. People who don't play D&D. You know what I mean. That's everything I've got for now. Uh, let me know if I missed anything, though. If you've got tricks for speeding up combat, let me know in the comments. I'm going to steal them. Like if you liked the video, subscribe if you want to see more. You know how it goes. Until next time. Mwah.